Beauty of part of the beauty of strength training, you know, I, I open by saying one or two days a week is it's it's so adaptation focused that if the average person, and this is how I train people the back half of my career, my goal was to get someone to do strength training once or twice a week. And it was phenomenal with the results that they got because you send the signal. Now, of course, you're not gonna look like a bodybuilder doing this. You're not gonna get super shredded doing this, but you're gonna get pretty fit. You're gonna have good strength. You're gonna maintain some good mobility. And you do that over the years and you see great results. Those four things that I said, eventually that became, that was my structure. And that's how I got people to, to, to get good results forever. Yeah, that's how you stay consistently fit. Yes. And then you could always turn it up a notch if you want to look like totally. a bodybuilder. I mean, because if you if you stay consistent with that, you're never that far out from that. No. You know, you're not that far out from four weeks of like hardcore dieting and training to get yourself to look a certain way if that's what you want to do at that time. And I think versus letting it swing from left to right so hard. And when you decide, oh, I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to get shredded this summer. And it's like, oh man, I did all this damage for the last three months. I'm going to spend the next six months trying to get back in shape because I let myself go so far the other direction. Yeah. All right. Today's free program, MAPS Power Lift. This is the powerlifting specific MAPS program. Want to get better at the bench press, the deadlift and the squat? Well, that's MAPS Power Lift. And we're going to give it away for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. The notifications part, very important. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Powerlift. Also, we're running a sale this month. We have a workout program bundle that's on sale. It's the Shredded Summer Bundle. This includes Maps Aesthetic, Maps Hit, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutri Nutrition Guide, all packaged together and discounted. We took an additional 50% off. And then if you just wanna do one program, especially one that's great for the summer, Try MAPS HIT. It's a short, intense, fat-burning workout. It's high-intensity interval training done the right way. That program is 50% off. So if you're interested in either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JUNE50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Look, contrary to popular belief, uh, being fit and healthy is actually pretty easy, okay? There's four simple steps you can take, and you'll generally get a fit and healthy body from doing so. Number one, Lift weights one to two days a week, okay? Now, you're not going to get jacked doing that, but that will have some profound effects. Number two, avoid heavily processed foods. Now, you're not going to get ripped doing that, but you're also not going to get obese or overweight. Number three, aim for a high-protein diet, about 0 0.6 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. Mm. Great for muscle preservation, building. It's good to help with your appetite. And the last one, very easy, walk for 10 to 15 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you did those four things, you would get a generally healthy, fit body. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I like it, but I would add simple, but it's not easy to execute well, for people. That's I'm glad you said that. Simple yeah. is probably better, right? Because the, the hard part is the consistency, even with just those. But I think the challenge that happens in, in health and fitness in our space is that we make um, good the enemy of perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't Voltaire say that, Doug? I think you're the one that showed me. He's the one that made it. It's attributed that, to him, yes. Yeah. Who's good, Voltaire? Voltaire. Uh, philosopher. Sounds like a, yeah, oh, yeah. Voltron. a villain from uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Or Voltron. Something. <laughs> that was from a cartoon. No. Voltron was an awesome cartoon, by the way. Yeah, it was. Maybe have a little pop-up here so everybody can see what happened. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. He said, don't make good the enemy of perfect. And we tend to do this, right, where because I'm not perfect – because I'm not doing, you know, five days a week in the gym and I'm not counting all my macros and I don't have my meals all prepped and I don't do all this cardio and do all this stuff that we're like, forget it. It's just, I'm not going to even try. Right. But you, we learned this as coaches and trainers. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Now, fitness enthusiasts and people who are like super passionate about it, make it their job and their career. Mm -hmm. They're going to do all that perfect stuff or they're going to aim for that. But the average person, if they literally just did what I said, one to two days a week of, of, of lifting weights, walking 10 minutes after meals, eating, you know, trying to aim for protein, kind of avoiding heavily processed food. What you would have is a bunch of generally fit, healthy people with a body fat percentage that's relatively healthy. The way most people want to look and feel, that's what they would get. You know, this is interesting. It reminds me of when we first met Paul Check and um, just basically even our understanding back then, this is like years ago. Um, and, and meeting people like at the pinnacle of their coaching, uh. it, just how like 
insanely simple. Like just yeah. those those simple things that they just drill home and communicate so much more effectively. And I feel like we've been shaving a lot of the fat off of like our message as we've been talking on the podcast quite a bit. But it's really just those simple things to focus on. You know, the other thing that I would add to that that this is personal for my my own personal journey that I have found is like when I fall off or when I'm inconsistent is uh, not allowing me to go so extreme the other direction. Like for oh, a, like an overcorrection. Yeah, yeah. Like most of my, my fitness career, I, what I struggle with, I was like, I'm either on or I'm off. And when I'm off, I'm like justifying the candy, the ice cream, yeah. the, you know, overconsumption, the not working out like every, and then when I'm on, I'm on. And I, and what I've gotten better about as I've gotten older is that, you know, I could have a, a week of really inconsistent training and kind of be off, you know, and I could even have maybe a meal here or there where it's like, you know, this wasn't the ideal choice, but not allowing myself to swing so hard the other direction where you mm -hmm. start just off oh, fucking I'm off. So I'm just I ate earlier bad and now I'm going to keep eating bad. And like just I used to do that a lot because I had this like and as a trainer, I did it, too, because I knew that I could snap out of it and get back in. But then it makes the swing so dramatic and it makes it so hard to always come back where it's like, you know, I'm just aware that this last week or so it's been you know i've been pretty sedentary i haven't got a lot of walking in i've only trained like once you know in the last four days so it's like you know and, and then and last night was game night watching the warriors and stuff like that and so you know Christian, that's normally when we'd want to have pizza or a burger or eat you know enjoy a game and i i didn't you know i had a, like a taco salad instead mm -hmm. you know so still something i enjoyed it was a Balance. nice yeah, but just learning to to like have those conversations with yourself and be honest, like, well, I really haven't been putting the work in moving wise, training wise. Yeah, I can have a burger if I really wanted to right now, but I really this is not the time to That's do it. That's the whole good versus yeah. perfect thing. It's like if it's not perfect, then it's way over here. And yeah. then if, and then, you know, and you make the you make good and perfect compete against each other. And if it's not perfect, it's not worth it. It's like you ever watch those uh those like driving safety videos where they say, Hey, if your car starts to swerve or your instinct is to overcorrect yep. with the steering wheel yeah. and then you end up flipping the car when in reality you need to be much more gentle with your mm -hmm. correction and don't create that overcorrection that's what people do with their nutrition it's like uh oh i'm going this way swing the steering wheel over there and then they flip the car and everybody yeah or dead. like working out too it's like you it, don't find any value if they only have like 20 minutes or they only have like right. you know or one exercise right well, yeah like it, it's so therefore it's a wash i'm not even going to attempt the workout because what benefit am i really going to get today look Look, the key was, I mean, we did this, right? When you train people long enough, eventually you're like, I just want to be effective. Like, you know, this message isn't working. How can I have an effective message? Like the walk 10 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's way, you're going to find that people are way more consistent if they do that versus do 30 minutes of cardio every day. But they both equal 30 minutes of activity, yeah. right? Uh, but one of them is, uh, oh, after I eat, I just, I don't have to change. I don't get on a machine or I just go for a walk for yeah. 10 minutes and it's nice and I can talk with someone, helps with digestion, and it becomes part of my normal routine. It's all kind of the same in terms of activity, but one, you're far more likely to be consistent. Well, Justin just nailed another really big one that's changed for me too is um, I used to be that way. If I if I didn't have the time to put my full workout in, I would write off the workout completely. Yeah, yeah. Where now that's there's many times where I'll come home and I'm like, ah, I really don't feel like it. Oh, I don't have time. And I go like, well, I'll just squat. Let's we'll get three sets of squats real quick. Yeah. I would never do that in the past. In the past, I'd be like, that's a weak workout. That's not, I'm not going to get much benefit from that. But boy, does that make a huge difference just doing that by itself. It's amazing how that bleeds into the rest of, let rest of your day. And activity is activ activity, even if it's just three sets of squats. Mm -hmm. So that's changed a lot in my career. As I've gotten older, I've, I've allowed myself to have these days where I'm just like, oh, okay, I, I didn't get a full hour workout in, but at least I did this. Yeah, I've, I've noticed personally, it's just like, if I just do something, it still stimulates my muscles. It, it, it still carries into later on when I have that opportunity, my workouts are better <clears throat> because I didn't have all mm -hmm. of that inactivity then that I'm almost like having to uh, start over start over yeah. and, and find that momentum it's like i'm still keeping a little bit of that momentum going yeah well the beauty of part of the beauty of strength training you know i, I open by saying one or two days a week is it's it's so adaptation focused that if the average person and this is how i train people the back half of my career my goal was to get someone to do strength training once or twice a week and it was phenomenal with the results that they got because you send the signal now of course you're not gonna look like a bodybuilder doing this you're not gonna get super shredded doing this but you're going to get pretty fit. You're going to have good strength. You're going to maintain some good mobility. And you do that over the years and you see great results. Those four things that I said, 
eventually that became, that was my structure. And that's how I got people to, to, to get good results forever. Yeah, that's how you stay consistently fit. Yes. And then you could always turn it up a notch if you want to look like totally. a bodybuilder. I mean, because if you, if you stay consistent with that, you're never that far out from that. No. You know, you're not that far out from four weeks of like hardcore dieting and training to get yourself to look a certain way if that's what you want to do at that time. And I think versus letting it swing from left to right so hard. And when you decide, oh, I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to get shredded this summer. And it's like, oh, man, I did all this damage for the last three months. I'm going to spend the next six months trying to get back in shape because I let myself go so far the other direction. Yeah, you know what's interesting, too, is I, I don't know if you guys ever had this where you had a client hire you who's got lots of experience working out and they just they overtrained, right? They worked out a lot. And you're like, you know what? Just work out with me twice a week. And, and we, there's a lot we could do with that. And there is. There's a lot you could do with just twice a week with programming. And then they get better results than they've ever had before yeah. in their life. That was Doug, by the way. Doug oh. hired me and he had a lot of experience working out five days a week, six days a week, body for life. He followed, you know, Bill Phillips, you know, body for life. And, his, and I convinced him just do two days a week with me. Hit PRs in his lifts, built more muscle. Well, know, that same thing happened to me in my mid twenties. My mid twenties, uh, like I was, this was at the peak of you know playing basketball, wakeboarding, snowboarding, training seven days a week. Like, and I just said, well, I was in a pretty hard plateau. I'd say that for a couple of years there, I'd say my physique really didn't, my physique and strength really didn't progress. Just kind of hanging around that. And I was fit, but I, I couldn't, pro I couldn't progress. I actually pulled way back on the amount of training volume I did. And then my body started to progress. That was like the first aha moment I had with, with training volume and intensity, understanding like it's a fine dance. It's mm -hmm. not the more you do, the more results you get. And it's really hard to communicate that to people because almost everywhere else in your life, it doesn't work that way. The more effort you put towards something, yeah. you know, at work or whatever with that, the more return you typically get in it, the more I read towards something, the smarter I get towards this. Like in this, in with, when it comes to working out and getting in shape, it's not the same way. It's different. You know, yep. you just because you put more work and effort doesn't necessarily you're going to get more results from that. Yeah. Great point. So Adam, I wanted to um, bring something up to you because you and I are very similar in this, in this regard. So I've been touring universities with my, my son, right? So he's, 16 is going to turn 17 uh, in about a month, um, and he's going to be a senior in high school in this next uh, school year. So now we're looking at universities and stuff, and we went and looked at uh, University of Nevada, by the way. Phenomenal school. Total hidden gem, I had no right? idea. Gorgeous yeah. school. And we're going through. He's already looked. You know, He looked over here at Santa Clara. Um, we're going to go Arizona State next and, and check that out. But I have, you know, I, I didn't go to college. I don't have formal education. All, my understanding of that whole experience is what I see in movies. So I never really <laughs> lived in that, right? So we show like Animal up. House? Yeah. You know, stuff like that, Back right? Back to school, yeah, the, the yeah. Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. So, you know, we go there and they're giving us a tour. And by the way, I, I can see why college is so expensive. It's like the stuff that they put in these schools. It's like, this is a resort. Like, it's insane. We saw the dorms. And, all, and I got a little bit of jealousy. You know, like, yeah. like, man, I, I, God, if I, I wonder what yeah, that experience the golden would, years. yeah, what would that experience be like? And, you know, obviously I wouldn't, I, if I went back in time, I still wouldn't change anything because yeah. I went on my, on the right path for myself. But part of me is like, I wonder what that would have been like. Do you that, ever feel like that? A hundred percent I do. And the irony of that to me is that because people have asked me before, of like, I, I used to get asked a lot in my mid to late twenties and even early thirties a little bit, you know, will you ever go back or do you ever want to go back or doing this or like that? Like. And the irony is that, you know, it's it's a higher education, right, is what's promoted yeah. and, and what they're selling you. But that's not why I would want to go back. Same here. I, mean, I, don't, I wouldn't I don't, want to go back to I don't learn. feel like I missed out on that. In yeah. fact, I you know, I think I, I hacked into, uh, you know, growing and, and learning and reading and like how to what to pursue the things that I'm interested in. And um, and you can teach yourself uh, everything that they teach you in university. There's there's books out there. Especially now. Yeah, especially today. I mean, yeah. especially with tools like YouTube and Google and the stuff that we didn't have when we were first going through school. But yeah, when I think about... Uh, what I missed is the experience. Like I had, friends, so I had a lot of friends when um, it was actually divided in my group. So we had, there was a, there was a big group of us in high school that were all really close, and fifty percent of us went to junior college. I was part of that group, and then fifty percent went off to university. So I had you know San Diego, San Diego State. We had uh, Santa Barbara. We had UC Davis. We had Cal Poly. Um, those were where most I would say mm -hmm. a couple Chico were like where all my friends went. And so I would go visit them all the time. Like I would, and I was going to junior college, which to me was like extended high school. Yeah. Uh, at least that's what it felt like for me. 
Um, and then we go down and we visit them and I'd always be envious after I leave because we go put like if you've never been to Santa Barbara, there's a place called Isla Vista IV. It's popular for where the parties are at right there on DP Street. I had a girlfriend that lived right on that right on the DP Street. And it's insane. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you go like, every weekend was insane. You go you down Mardi there. Mardi Gras at Cal oh, Poly. Yeah, I went to Mardi Gras, at Cal <laughs> Poly. I got a chain. girlfriend that went to, to Cal Poly. And so I used to go down there all the time. And so there was a part of me that. Like, I really felt like, man, I, I missed out on that experience of school. So I do feel yeah, that Yeah, that's because, I mean, we're going in. First of all, they're showing us around. The gym at this university. By the way, I'm, I'm open to suggestions because we're looking at different schools. And you can DM the Mind Pump media page on, on Instagram if you have any good connections um, or suggestions. He's going to be getting into computer science or maybe media computer science. But anyway, the gym there, one of the best gyms I've ever seen in my life. And I've, been, I've yeah. seen a lot of gyms. It's a four-story gym. You have functional area with grass and, and sleds and tires. And then you had like this free weight area. It was like all these racks and bumper plates. Then there's like machines. Then there's, I mean, just four, the top level was an indoor track. And then yeah. this is a college gym. Yeah. I'm walking through and I'm looking at my kid. And, you know, he's not really into working out like I was at all. I'm looking, I'm like, bro, if I had this opportunity, yeah. I would have done backflips. Then there was like a media center where you can even do a pod, have a podcast room. And a virtual reality. And this is all for the... I'm like, this is great. And the dorms, you know, you're looking at the dorms. I'm like, man, this would have been... Well, that gym I, I reminds me of the performance one that was in Reno that we went to a long time ago. I don't remember the name of it. It was like all athletic-based and it had like a Reno, section... I think it was called Reno Athletic. Yeah. Oh, Reno, right. Reno Sport and Athletic. Yes. Huge. And, and it's just like the buildings there are just bigger because it's a little all bit indoor. cheaper to, you know, expand and get that kind of square footage. But... Yeah, I, I'm sure it was like so, a crazy. I'm going to ask you, Justin, because uh, you're the only one that went and, and, Doug. and lived in. Yeah, but I, I survived college. Yeah. Okay. I so, made it all the way through. So, when I watch the movies, it looks like it's just fun, like, like Van Wilder party, that's, that's hang out, make classic. a lot of friends. Is it like that? Or is that, is obviously that's dramatization? So, so it's, it's all in like kind of choose your own adventure. Because um, <laughs> I've had. I've had like both, right? So I've had um, situations like I was at San Jose State first and I was kind of similar to Adam where I was always like going to other colleges because the atmosphere there is just not conducive to like hanging out and like partying okay. and like, you know. Yeah, San Jose State's it's not very social. a uh, commuter. commuter school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I kind of hacked that a little bit by um, rooming with some of my buddies that were in the Air Force and they had like this old... Um, a fraternity house that I could live there cheap. And so I just wanted to move out of my parents. Cause I was first year I was living with my parents commuting and it was totally lame. Uh, and I was always like finding myself driving all the way down to Cal Poly to meet my girlfriend and, and all that stuff. And then I was like, I got to stop thinking about my girlfriend. This is, this is stupid, you know, like, and so I moved in with my buddies and it was like this total like roach motel, you know, it was just disgusting and scummy, but we loved it. Cause it was like, you know, I was, it was freedom. Yeah. And so we had a few parties and stuff, but it wasn't like crazy until I, I moved out to, um, t I went to Chicago and then I, I went to Trinity, which actually I was like, I just need to get out of here. And I was super studious and was basically locked on campus because of my scholarship. So I'm like, I had the dorm, had the cafeteria, all this stuff was accounted for. And, uh, and there's like, you can't have girls over. Like it's like very strict and like, it was like very focused on academics. Uh, but I found myself then rebelling and wanting to go to like uh, uh, Illinois state and all these. And so I had like those mm. experiences, uh, you know, at the other colleges, like, Quite a few. Well, times. dude, these the, so the one we looked at, <laughs> and it was like the movies. So I, okay, so so here's what trips me out. I have no idea. Remember, yeah, yeah, people might be laughing now, but I have no experience with this. N my family, my brother, and my sister graduated college, but they lived at home when they went because we couldn't afford you know all this stuff. Yeah, and nobody else went. We're all poor immigrants, right? We came from Sicily, so I have no experience. So I had no idea that. So did you not dude, did jello you, shots and cake stands? Now and, you yeah. were working a lot. Like Bro, I, I was nineteen. <laughs> so I, was in, I, was, I was managing gyms at nineteen. I got married at twenty. So were you not? Um, were you not like Justin and I? Where you were going to friends' no. colleges? No. Oh wow! Bro, so you have zero experience. Bro, general manager. I kind of feel like I got. Uh, that's why I don't have that much regret because yeah. oh damn near every weekend I was either in Cal Poly, San Diego, or Santa Barbara. Those, especially dude, those I was nineteen managing gyms. By the time I was twenty two, I was married. 
So no, I didn't do any of that stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I've no. I, so anyway, I did not know. So the dorms, one of the dorms we looked at, it's called a suite where it's a room. Then there's two rooms, so two people sleep on this side, two people sleep on that side, shower, bathroom, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's all. It has to be all boys in the room, but the floor is co-ed. Mm -hmm. So the next suite could be a bunch of girls. I'm like, what? Yeah, you guys are gonna be living on a floor with guys and girls like this sounds kind of like i don't know is that a recipe for a disaster yeah i couldn't imagine that oh yeah at that age that yeah, would have been seen that i yeah. mean it's so some of the schools they don't have the say, the girls and guys in the same building um but i mean and then you have what what's it called justin you have like a person who's like supposed to monitor the hall oh the yeah the, the resident uh, uh RA. It's a, yeah the ra right and the ra is always like a, a student that's like two years in front you know Dude. so like the policing of like can girls come over guys come right over, it's kind of like we, you know we punk the you're not RA supposed student. yeah you're not supposed yeah. Supposed to, but it happens. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It depends. Like the schools that I've been to, that I've gone. Like, it's uh, you know, I had girlfriends that, and had dorms, and I'm not supposed to be in there. And I spent plenty of nights in those dorms. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, you, so trip off this. So at, sneak me in. As yeah. we're doing this tour, there's this little Star Wars looking vehicle driving around. It's like maybe this big off the ground, and it's got six wheels. So three on one side, three on another. This antenna, and it's like, and I'm like, what is that? I'm like, oh, there's an app. And you can order food from any of the restaurants or the cafeteria. So anywhere on campus, and they have, by the way, they have like legit restaurants there. You order it and the car will drive. It's autonomous. It'll drive to wherever you are on campus. That's so cool. You. I'm like, what the hell? What was, I wonder if they're connected. Remember, what was the name of the company? I brought them up. Uh, it was somebody, uh, I mean, uh, the all-in guys talked about it. Uh, actually, it was in his book, uh, Angel, and Jason Calcanis. Oh, right. There was a coffee company. I forgot the name of that oh, coffee company. Oh, yeah. And I haven't followed up to look to see yeah, where. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But I mean. He, you, you do it on your app and show up and it's ready. Yeah. And it's, it, <clears throat> I mean, he he's banking on it, you know, like literally rivaling Starbucks because it's supposed to be able to, I mean, it's supposed to be able to like reduce the cost, mm -hmm. right? And then also the waiting time. The two biggest things that draw people to yep. like Starbucks, like that would outcompete it would be get your custom coffee. And you get it faster and cheaper. Show up, get it. Well, yeah. Starbucks changed uh, by making everything like push button. And so like the baristas don't really do a lot of their craftiness there anymore anyways. So it's mm -hmm. like, it, oh, you know, you're, you're just kind of like getting button pushers. To, well, to, I, oh, I wonder if they're actually moving in that direction then. To well, work. everything to, would be, yeah, I'm right? sure because they are. Especially, well, I mean, market pressures too, because the minimum <laughs> wages keep going up. So that's going to make it happen even faster. I can't, I, I think oh, it's- Cafe X, dog? Oh, dog, Cafe X? Dog. <laughs> Cafe is dog. <laughs> dog. Yeah. Yeah. Caffeine I, hasn't hit yet. Yeah, yeah Cafe dog. X. Speaking of coffee, yeah. I I, uh, I think it'll be so cool when like DoorDash is like autonomous like that, right? Where you could just or and it'll it'll find you on your app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could literally be standing anywhere and it'll just. So is Domino's up. like the first then? Because I mean they've they already created the autonomous vehicle that you like drives up and then you go exchange your credit card and then you pick it up. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're already working on all that. Yeah, no, I know Domino's is actually in a couple. couple Are these cities. cars going to get like hijacked and stuff? Like, <laughs> <laughs> get the, get the food. I, I don't. See, we talked about it the other day, right? Like you brought it up about that one on campus, but it's like you're not going to risk stealing a five dollar sandwich and getting kicked out of your college. Like, no, I, not there. But yeah, I'm talking yeah. about in the real world, like DoorDash and stuff. I've seen people risk <laughs> way less than. I mean, that's true, right? So you know, if you're really I'm hungry, sure it'll right? happen. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder how they. I wonder how they will police that. Maybe just make them super hard to break into. Yeah, right. <laughs> Armored vehicles. So they, have, they have electric <laughs> electric defense system. Yeah, they just shock you <laughs> off of them. Yeah. I saw, I saw, oh, I don't know if, if I can find this video. So sorry if we don't have it. There was a guy that put um, in his car a defense. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a flashbang grenade because his car kept getting breaking, broken into. Uh-huh. So someone breaks in, it's like, Poosh! and I mean, and I think he's gonna get in trouble for it. Oh, but the guy course. who tried there to was in California, I'm there was a great yeah. video of this uh, ex Marine who knew that this guy was stealing his packages all the time. And then he had like an Amazon package there. He put one of those flash grenades in there. And the guy went to get it. Is this guy that shit himself? Boom, he shit himself. Yeah, yeah. He so he flew that. like off the uh, <laughs> uh, the porch. I he gets up uh, and, he, and he comes over to like apologize to the old man who's like yelling at him through the the nest speaker oh, wow. and he's just like oh and he, and he shit himself and he's like walking away all like i'm oh, sorry no <laughs> have you seen the ones where they put the hidden like they put a camera in the package and if you open it 
it um, it sprays out like this really putrid fart spray, and it does um, uh, it yeah. sprays out like Confetti. a bunch of glitter all yeah. over your house. Yeah, have no. you seen these? No. Uh-huh. And you can watch no. the video. Like, well, people get the package home. They're like, oh, we're gonna open, it. and they open it, and you hear the spray, bzz, 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 and then. Pff, <laughs> they're, they're covering I love what it, is do you, uh, any idea what the percentage of like Amazon packages that get stolen on oh, a must be is it really high I don't think it's yeah. super high but it's enough to where it's a depends it's a on probably your neighborhood but yeah yeah I've, I've you know I don't know I've never read anything like as far as like what the percentage you, you know what you know what's funny I could see and I don't know if laws allow this right because we have like we have laws for the post office so I, I could see though a company where they would put something on your property, like a lockbox, and if they ever deliver anything, they'll put it in that, and then nobody can get into it. Well, kind of like how Amazon Amazon does that at grocery stores and stuff, right? Yes, like, but I, I think to residences, I don't think you're allowed to do that because I think there's laws that that only the post office. I don't know. I don't know if I, you know if that's a if that's a real thing or if I'm oh, interesting. Yeah, what? I don't know if that would be impacted. like they have a monopoly on like mailboxes. Well, well, you can't put something in a mailbox unless it's mail. I know on a mailbox, right. but like, why not create like a competitive mailbox for Amazon or like you're saying? Like, yeah, hmm. like what? What would stop me as a homeowner? If, like I have a mailbox underneath it, I have a lockbox that Amazon, the Amazon drivers, yeah, like, they use a barcode or something. And then it opens. yeah, yeah. What, what would I mean? I wonder. I feel like there's laws that prevent that. You know. If there is, that is has to be the stupidest thing I know, ever. I know. <laughs> yeah. You have to, you know. Speaking of like, so um, I was trying to think about how they're going to regulate this or handle this. Like I just was looking at. Um, LIV, this new golf league that just popped up. It's like Saudi based. Like, so they're backing uh, this new league to pop up. I think uh, Phil Mickelson's a part of it now. And like some other like old names that they've basically bought to start running in this league, but they've offered big time golfers like Tiger Woods, like almost a billion dollars to basically what? jump from the PGA over to this new wow. league. And so they're, they're literally trying to buy up like all the best players and just move them over into this, this league they just created. So they go to this league. They, that means they can't go and the, they're not competing in the PGA anymore. Right. They're just competing in this league. So think about that. Like all the legacy of whatever started with the PGA, like yeah. they're just going to jump over and like start this entirely new thing. And so Tiger actually turned it down and he's like, there's always money out there. So this is really, this is a really interesting conversation because the, and there, were, there were organizations that try to do this with the NFL. Well, with, you see, we ever saw it with the UFC fighting. Uh-huh. You haven't really seen it like... Uh, Wasn't there something to do with the NFL? Like the XFL? XFL? Yeah. yeah, but they weren't the, trying to buy them. No, this is different. Okay. Yeah, they were just trying to create another option. And there's, the, the interesting part about this conversation is it's extremely lucrative. And so there's huge margins in the NFL, NBA, golf, right. and stuff like that. So it does present an opportunity for someone to pull like an Amazon. Right. Right, where they take a loss for five, ten, ten years, years yeah. you know, just to acquire all the talent. So they, if they have the kind of capital to and run rate to do that, and literally steal their blue their their blueprint, like mm-hmm. why not? Why can't they do it? I mean, you're seeing that right now. Spotify is doing that with podcasters. That I mean, they spent almost a billion dollars last year on acquiring people like Joe Rogan and all these other big names to come over. They didn't make a billion dollars back from no. that right now. So they they're they're, lo- they're gonna lose on that for at least I don't know three, five, maybe now, ten years. You guys are way more into, into professional sports than I am, but it, because of the legacy and the heritage, I mm-hmm. feel like this would be harder to compete with because the average fan is loyal to NFL, NBA, right? And even yeah, though but the- they're, they're loyal to those organizations because of the the content that they're creating because of the professional names and athletes they have. Mm. If somebody can come in and outpay all the biggest you names, don't you think most people? It, it's a care. serious oh, threat. It's a threat. A hundred percent. If you okay, so, I'm, I'm gonna, so what's brilliant about this is that you're going after. Okay, I don't know the numbers on this, but this is so. This is really interesting, Justin. So maybe golf is one of the easier sports to do this with. They already travel, you know, around the world to do a lot of their like the tournaments and stuff like that. So they're playing all I mean, over. They're already international. Especially. Yeah, they're already international as, as as it is. There's probably a lot less players. It's not like buying acquiring all. Yeah, it's the, individuals you know, too. It's not. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, exactly. So you could go buy, uh, let's say, fifty of the top golfers, and mm-hmm. that's all you need to literally take over the PGA. If you took fifty of the top NBA players, you still don't have. So I'm gonna right. play. I'm gonna yeah, play devil's advocate. Dynamic. You don't have I'm half gonna, of them. I'm gonna play saying? devil's advocate uh, here. I, I would assume that big sport uh, organization or big, you know, sport like companies like Nike, Adidas, whatever, have deals with already have deals with places like the PGA, NBA, NFL. 
So going to one of these organizations may mean that you can't work with these other companies. No, 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 no. Are, what, they what they, the deals? deals would be what what they would have is like this: like Nike would be locked up with like Nike might assign um you know a five year deal with the NBA to do advertising on for commercials and stuff like that. The, yeah. the Nike has direct deals yeah, with the direct athletes. Deals with athletes like Jordan. That's yeah, why but, he got most of his money was just from that direct. But would, would there be a would there be something in those agreements that you the have NBA to says, play in the NBA that you, that that you can't that they are not allowed to play in, in a competing organization. Hmm. I, and then I mean, like a non-compete. Yeah. And then here's the other devil's advocate. If I'm, if I'm a politician and I'm looking at this, this Saudi backed company competing with our American company, that could definitely be something that would be hard to overcome and be like, Hey, they're going to destroy this American heritage. You know, NBA has been here for, I don't know how many, how long, a hundred years or whatever. Now we've got this other company trying to take over. Oh, come on. You think the NBA is loyal to American heritage? <laughs> no, I think that they would <laughs> use that. <laughs> that's we've seen that's like an oxymoron right there. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. You're right. However, I'm yeah. talking about like how they could use it that way. I don't, I don't think they are at all. Obviously look at their deals with China. Yeah, right. China right. was a big part of yeah. it. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they're, I think they would sell the highest bidder. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think there's any loyalty there whatsoever. Interesting. And I, and I so that's why I'm like, man, this is cutthroat. <clears throat> like they're just coming in and, and off making these offers. Yes. Maybe there's some resistance right now, but how long? Well, so I mean, the reason why it hasn't happened in the past, in my opinion, is just because the amount of money it would take to actually do that. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, you, again, the example I use is like an Amazon who's gone in and disrupt disrupted industries yeah. and taken the losses for years and years and years in order to dominate. This is just this is a little different because they're so established. Um, you know, like NFL, NBA, PGA, they have long, long histories. Uh, they've been dominant for so long. Um, I like competition. I think it's a great thing um, because I, I think it's it's better for everybody. Mm. But because of their heritage, like boxing, for example, is much easier to um, to disrupt because they had different organizations. It was about the fighters. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like this one dominant organization, league or whatever. Speaking of which, did you guys hear about Butterbean yes. calling out uh, uh, Jake Paul? Or I did hear about that. But, no. Okay, if there's ever somebody I want to see fight Jake Paul, it would be Butterbean. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, to me, that's just... That's like the perfect because he was he's been like a troll forever, oh, right? Yeah, and yeah. like he fought like just anybody who would, who would step in the ring with him, and, and it was like this huge wrestler. Sometimes it was always like this kind of freak show thing, but he could throw blows. Oh. Like people like slept on Butterbee, oh, and his yeah. head is made out of concrete. But yeah. he's old now, isn't he? Yeah. Old he's old. Now? I know they yeah. they kept claiming he's in like good shit. I don't know. <laughs> shape yeah, he ever been in him, good shape? But yeah, it's like he's capable apparently. And so is he like 58 maybe? Yeah. Think about, I mean, he's just, sees nothing but green. I mean, by, I, you know, throwing this out there to Jake Paul, the, the Paul brothers have definitely become extremely polarizing personalities. Right. Yeah. But, um, they, they've grown on me. I like them. Yeah, I, I, I like think, them. I, I, have, I, mean, I, have a, I have a lot of respect for what they, I don't know if I it's like. It's very it, but calculated I what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and you got to get. I mean, come on. Like, uh, I know a lot of people like shit on them. Like, as far as like they're not. I mean, a real boxer would take. Okay, fair enough. But it's like they're playing the game, dude. They're playing not, the money game. They're, here. Exactly, they're playing the money game. And I mean, he actually's kind of holding his own. I mean, he's it's not like 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 Woodley is not like a like a slap. You know what I'm saying? No. Not, I can't get in a ring and like fight yeah, him in yeah, six yeah. months. That's you know what I'm true. saying? That's like true. he knocked my that's ass out. I know that's the best fighter he's fought so far. Yeah, I so. mean, so I mean, it's not like I mean, he's got skills. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't know the history of Butterbean. Like this guy, he fought in what are they called tough man contests? Yeah, tough man back in the day was regular guys getting in the ring with gloves and just hammering each other, and he dominated. Then he made the he was like he was like Jake Paul in a sense before Jake Paul. That's what I mean. Yeah, he made the leap over to uh, uh, to professional boxing, and everybody thought he was going to get his ass kicked. He actually did okay. He did all right. Yeah, it's just that he obviously stamina and like he has yeah, to get dude, look his, how old he looks, bro. He's he, he so had to get his knockout punch in his, before he his fighting style. Out. His fighting style was if he connected, he put you to sleep. So the only and he could take okay, a lot of punches. The only thing yeah. I don't like about this stuff, and so I would it'd be interesting to hear like where he's at. Like what I get worried about is some of these guys uh, desperate because they need money because they've you know sure. sp they spent their wealth yeah. and their when they were young and, and capable, and they now see like a quick money grab, and like that's kind of dangerous but to this, get in the ring. This like ties in, I think, to that whole like who's going to that new golf league. You know, it's like it's like. They can easily pull like names that have had like significance back in the day, but in terms of like right now, like the 
the best of the best and the fighters like they want they want that like pedigree they want they want to get the accolades and all that kind of stuff yeah. along with the money yeah, yeah but boxing man i don't know 58 i think he's 58 in boxing years that's like 120 like <laughs> yeah especially after taking a lot of punishment over yeah, time yeah yeah Not i don't very, know how healthy he is i mean yeah. what's the motivation if you're someone like him to even get in the ring with like a jake why why do that oh you're right it might be money it has to be it right to i be mean honest. why else would 100%. you even why else would you even put your boxers are notoriously terrible with their money that's historically just true they just they're, they're known for back well, in the day they would they would make their money then they'd open a bar and then they'd get overweight and lose their money well what happened i mean i think that's just i mean that's any athlete right i think the percentage on like young athletes that come into like millions of dollars i think it's like 80 something percent of them end up losing losing mm -hmm. all of it you, i mean there's something it was funny i was actually just thinking about this katrina and i were talking about money and savings and stuff like that um you know to 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 be long term like wealthy there it really does require uh, a respect for money it's hard to Discipline. gain it's hard to yeah. gain a respect for money when you get a windfall of it overnight. You're right. Yeah. When you when you were you you came from nothing for so long, you're struggling, you're you know eating hot pockets and living off a of top ramen, and then you you hit it because you become this professional mm -hmm. athlete, and they sign you for this multi multi million dollar deal. And you just get it overnight. And there's no, you never develop the respect. Well, for, part of it is it's a tool. It's a very powerful tool. And part of it is because the skills and discipline required to earn um, money over time, if you build it, let's say in investments or business, is different than if you are a talented musician or actor or well, or athlete where all of a sudden it's like boom. Well, especially when you read the the statistics and stuff on what makes what's the most common themes amongst all millionaires and billionaires and that is the ability to live significantly below their means. You know that's right. the most common thing mm -hmm. of all of them. Yeah. Not they invest in the stock market, not that they had rich yeah, parents, well not means. that they were an entrepreneur, yeah. not that they were a big CEO. The most common theme amongst all millionaires and billionaires is that they can live significantly below their means mm -hmm. yeah. they've built those those habits in and that is what yeah. is like yeah, because the habits you may have to to be <clears> in a, <throat> like a good athlete might not carry over to the habits and discipline that you build uh with money or just the skill because mm -hmm. it's a whole different you know ballgame remember tyson when he went bankrupt oh, yeah. and they talked about some of the stuff he had like he had like pet tigers and <laughs> like like just crazy I'm, amounts of money for me as a kid rem the first one i remember being so big like making news like that was mc hammer oh yeah he went uh, bankrupt yeah. yeah when he had like you know 50 people in the entourage that yeah. were like he had like a multi-million dollar like entourage just to go with his and his family you and know it's tough because he's like trying to give back to his community and all this and so he's like trying to bring it back but then he all of a sudden now everybody's like hanging out and like taking money and you know, I, I've seen that happen a few times the, with so many celebrities. The way I would do it is I would say, that's fine if you want to spend a bunch of money, but give take a certain percentage that you're going to invest no matter what, and then you can blow the rest. At least yeah. that money you know is going to do something for you. Well, yeah. they've gotten a lot better at that. Like you mentioned, like... Um, oh, yeah, they have they have like courses now, right? So yeah. you come into the NFL, and I think it's a week-long course that you have to go through, and I forget what it's what it's called, um, but there's a title for it. I'm sure somebody will DM mm -hmm. and tell me that's been through it. Um and but they their agents will hook them up with opportunities for oh, investments yeah. and like yeah, that's it's okay. a so lot that's more my, financially driven. My my buddy who is is a sports agent. One of the things like how the and he's been one for a long time. The thing that his position has evolved. It's like literally like he's now a social media guy and an investing guy. Like a big part, like now he coaches them on how to keep. Yeah, like well. negotiating contracts is one thing, right? But that's a very small part of their job now. What makes them really competitive against other sports agents is how well can you help this guy develop his personal brand, mm -hmm. like uh, i.e. social media and stuff like that, and then how how well can you help him manage his money, you know, with investing and things mm -hmm. like that. That's what makes you like a really good sports agent today in comparison to what it was, you know, say twenty years ago. Yeah. Well, they're all all about these are all skills you have to learn and develop over time. This is why I think if they invented a, a like a fitness pill, <laughs> and someone took it and just became like you know lean and whatever, they wouldn't. They would only you don't derive learn anything. That they way. would derive a fraction of the benefit that you actually get through going through the process because of those habits and behaviors that you develop. You know, that. speaking of that and developing skills to to make more money. Did you see what NCI did? I it's did. Super cool, huh? I did. So what they're doing is so they did this whole course. That normally you would pay a ton of money for, and they're they recorded it, and now are allowing people to watch it and learn from it for free. And this is for coaches, fitness, you know, coaches and, and trainers. And they're gonna they're, these are the the things that they talk about, which normally you would spend a lot of money having you know Jason and his team teach you. It's how to capture attention online, how to grow your following, doing it the smart way, how to nurture your audience so that they they start to trust you and like you. 
and then how to convert followers into high paying clients so that you can obviously deliver you know, results and build a business. Um, and it's all, they're doing it for free. So it's a recording, it's all out there and you can go. And I think what's, whatever, what's the site, Doug, that people go to for that? Yeah, it's mpbusinesscoachingchallenge.com. So M, M is a Mary P as in Paul, businesscoachingchallenge.com. Yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, super Hey, cool. so uh, I looked up, I just read a study on uh, testosterone replacement therapy, and it was a pretty well-made study. It was an 11-year study. So it was a pretty long year, oh, long study. Okay. And they, so they took men, obviously half of them, testosterone replacement therapy, the other half uh, not on testosterone replacement therapy. They controlled for things like diet and exercise. And testosterone replacement therapy had pretty significant impacts on longevity, improved longevity across the board. You know, oh, which is which is great because again, remember this is a hormone that because uh, if now, abused can be used for sports and whatever. Everybody thinks it's this like dangerous hormone. Right. Oh no, you're gonna take. This it. has to help with the stigma that it's. They that's were they, for they were leaner, better mobility, better longevity, better cognition. I mean, just across the board, better insulin, uh, you know, sensitivity, just better longevity because they went from low testosterone to optimal levels of testosterone through replacement therapy. So. Now, when you say they controlled for, you know, diet and exercise, does that mean that, you know, because here's another thing that I would think is because you're taking testosterone, you also are more likely to have better behaviors around exercise and diet too. Right. So they controlled get, for that. So like you're not even getting the, so what, what I'm, so my the point benefit is, wasn't from the exercise and diet. Right. Right. Yeah. But I would make the case that there's even more benefit. Absolutely. Like with that, like I would think that the people that were on that were also more consistent with their diet and exercise because they feel better. And Absolutely. They, and they're more motivated because they probably saw better results. And so that's the teasing thing. that out is another thing, but it's like, that's another factor that you have to add that. You're yeah. Probably leave that in. Like if your testosterone levels are low and you optimize them with a good doctor, right? Who knows how to kind of measure. And, and by the way, this isn't just as easy as, and I want to be clear here. I've talked about this before. It's not just take testosterone you still want you want to have a doctor who knows what they're doing, how to monitor you, because testosterone affects other hormones, and you want to find the right balance. But anyway, if you go from low testosterone to optimal for yourself, your mood improves, your energy improves, you have more drive, you um, you 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 don't need to sleep as much, or you don't feel as exhausted, which is going to lead to more activity, yeah. better motivation, and, and drive for maybe eating healthier. So they controlled for that. Now, if you left that alone, I bet the longevity. It's going to be, would show up even better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, pretty, pretty in interesting stuff. By the way, they used a form of testosterone. I did not know this existed. Um, and I don't think it would matter what form of testosterone you take, um, uh, whether you do it, uh, you know, shorter acting or longer acting. But they have a form of testosterone in Europe that it, the, the, it lasts, I think it's, I want to say, to uh, 21 days or something like that. Oh, wow. Long so half-life. Super long half-life. I didn't even know that existed. No, as far as I knew that uh, the... Uh, an anthate yeah, or sipinate were yes, the longest. Yes, thank you. An anthate is the ones that takes the, that's the longest. No, this I was, thought like, that was, like, it was like one... Four days? Is that four or No, it might days? even be longer. It might be 12 weeks. What? It was, yeah, it might be 12 no. weeks. I swear to God. No way. Yeah, you know, I'm going to... I sent the... Uh, Doug, I sent the uh, the link to the, the YouTube group. Maybe you can pull it up and... Really? Yeah, and we'll see. And I believe it was... It's a very, very long acting... There were 800 people, by the way, um, in this uh, particular... Is it T-Nation? Yeah. Mm. Per, per, yeah, it's, it's Mind one... Mind-blowing long... Oh, it's one it. shot every 12 weeks. Yeah, Doug had it up and then it disappeared right, right, right there. Right. Yeah. Andrew and I were competing here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't know he. I was casting. He was casting at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So. It was it was twelve weeks. One injection every twelve weeks. Crazy, right? Wow. I, I and I, what I'd love to see is it keep the level. It as, does. Wow. It does. Now here's the drawback. Why not taking that? I'd way rather only take a shot once every twelve. Weeks. I know. You know what the problem with that though would be is it, when you're finding the right dose. Now you got it, the shot in you, and that correcting it would be much harder. So I even noticed that with, because mm -hmm. I, I, when I was administering it to myself, I, enanthate is what I use, which has the longer half life. I find that my hormones are better balanced now running Sipinate. Oh, with a little bit. So of they have treatment. me on Sipinate, yeah. and and I think, and for that exact reason, that I can control. Yeah, because if it's too much, it's like, well, okay, we gotta wait for twelve weeks for yeah. this to kind of come out of your system. Not, and yeah, not only that too, if you go a little early, so that, one of the things that's hard about, I would imagine, about twelve weeks. I mean, you'd have to be really good about marking your calendar because it, I know how many times I've been like, wait a second, was that five days ago uh, or six days ago? Uh, I find yeah. myself doing that. Interesting. Wasn't Where, there another related study that you were talking to me about, like endocrine disrupting chemicals yeah, out there have dude. been like increasing? Substantial, bro. They did this study, um, and they studied the urine of a hundred men, 
and they found uh, dangerous levels above what's considered safe of uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals. Yeah. Like uh, phthalates and Should other be chemicals. Alarming to everybody. Other chemicals that affect your hormonal system. And they think, according to what I read in the study, that this is why, I didn't know this either, over the last 40 years, sperm counts have halved. Mm -hmm. Halved over the last four decades. And they think it's these chemicals. And the problem is, when we do studies on these chemicals, they study one chemical. Yeah. So they'll say, here's the safe amount for BPA. Here's the safe amount for this. But what they don't take into account is that there's 30 there's of these a chemicals. a multitude of them, yeah. Because of all these different plastics. Every and, day, and, all day, yeah, multiple dude, times yeah, a day. Yeah, just getting inundated with all of it. Yeah, it's just like, and that's why I think it's related to, um, <clears throat> you know, this exogenous hormone, like, therapy. It's because... We we got to do something. We got to intervene at this point with yeah. all of these like disrupting chemicals. By the way, and, and this this market has exploded. And I do want to say this: when you're looking at hormone replacement therapy labs, all of them will give you the same stuff, but they all have different doctors and different types of monitoring. What you pay for is not the testosterone that's included. What you pay for is the is the staff and right. the monitoring that makes the biggest difference. You do not what you don't want is go with the bargain one. You get your testosterone, and they don't. They 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 just not as privy in terms of maximizing. things. I mean, if you, if all you're trying to do is hunt down testosterone, then sure, why not? But I mean, if you're in the if you're really trying to balance your hormones and learn, like I was, like so I I pay more with regenerative than I was paying with the other company. So it is a little bit more money, but I I would pay double that for the what the knowledge that I'm gaining by being mm -hmm. with Rand and Doctor Todd because of the information that I can they, they have an answer for everything that I ask where the, I was the and they opposite. look at everything mm -hmm. yeah the opposite when I was working with the other company it was like the doctor approved all my stuff but I was working with like just a normal nurse that was administering it to me and whenever I had questions it was like oh I think so or yeah, maybe the, the red like, flag is when you know more than they do yeah, yeah and I know that I don't know that much in that area I mean that's an area that I there's a lot for me still to learn and that do, uh, Doctor Todd and Rand continue to educate me on so yeah and i mean and for our audience it's like if this is anything you've ever thought about or you have family or friends or yourself like the forum is free so not not being in there you're missing out well you can get this. actually i want to i want to i want to um talk about the forum so when you go on the forum what you'll get is one of the doctors will talk on their weekly live and you can ask them questions and you can also if you're a member of mphormones.com you can ask them you can try asking questions directly uh, but what I really highly recommend if you're already getting therapy or from somewhere else or you want an eval, you go to mphormones.com and they'll do, and you can pay for this, but you'll get comprehensive blood work and an analysis. And, they'll, and whether you do work with them or not, they'll be able to break it down and tell you kind of what's going on. Yeah, but I think out of respect for the doctors, I think, I mean, I noticed the other day on there that there's a lot of, there's, I mean, people, there's over 7,000 people now in that forum. And there's a lot of people that are using other doctors' medication, and then they're they're using, trying to ask them. Yeah, and then they're asking all the questions and taking up the, the the time of the doctors in our forum to help them with theirs. And it's just like you know, and it's there. We we pay for that service for them to get help and stuff like that. But you're really taking from the people that are investing in in those doctors and helping them out. And it's like to me, I'm like yeah. they be, don't be say anything. Consider it. Yeah, yeah. As I say, they don't say anything because they're cool like that right now. But I mean, I feel like it's it'll get overwhelming anyway. Yeah, it will. So, It'll get to a point where they can't help every single person in there. So be mindful of that. Yeah. I just think it's, I mean, to me, it's just, that's like a respect thing. Like if I'm, if I'm getting this incredible service from a doc, I mean, a doctor, you're paying hundreds of dollars an hour normally to have access to, especially a specialist like that. Yeah. And you're getting free access on the form like that. And then you're not even using their service. It's kind of like, come on, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's hey, like, uh, speaking of what Doug is, this episode goes up before father's day, right? Yeah. Are you guys yeah. doing anything for father's day? You guys yeah, you had yours, right? Uh, we so. did mine. Cause Jessica will be out of town. So yeah. Nice, so. I'm actually, Actually, I'm going to Sanctuary. Courtney's taking me oh, there. Oh, you are? Yeah, oh, over nice, the weekend. Dude. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and just get time. And then Sunday, we'll, we'll be hanging out with the kids and then doing our uh, hike in and, and whatnot. So we're going to try and find a spot uh, nice. like Pinnacles or something like that to That's go hit nice. up. Katrina just asked me, last, she actually asked me last night because I guess her family, uh, all the guys are getting together at her mom's and they normally, so all the women will barbecue and, and cook for the guys. Like we do the opposite for Mother's Day. Um, I think we're supposed to do that on Sunday. Although she was asking me, we don't have anything going on that weekend. Do you want to do something else? And I haven't decided if I want to do that or I want to kind of get away or, or have somebody watch Max and then have Katrina and I be able to do something. So I'm kind of torn on yeah. uh, what I'm going to do. Well, uh, Viore uh, apparently expects a huge surge of 
of people buying uh, Father's Day gifts. From yeah, him. who doesn't want that? You because know, of their, you know, because they're obviously they, they they have men and women's clothes. I wonder right if that's there. one of their better days. It is. Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah. So I was looking it up. So you, right now, you know what they're doing online is these like uh, f- apparently dads are hard to buy gifts for. I, I, I guess this makes <laughs> sense. I mean, it's, my dad's always hard to buy gifts. Yeah, for. I just go get what I want. That's the I think that's the problem. That's what it is. Yeah. And but there's this this guy. There's these guides online, like you know, g- gift ideas for dad. Smart. Viori's on like every other one. Mm-hmm. So like every time I pull one up, Viori's one of the ones that they list uh, as like, oh, core shorts or, you know, these pants yeah, or- core shorts. I just had Cor- Courtney order me some of the, they had this like cactus green colored core short. Anyway, it was, it was dope. Yeah. I mean, they're, dude, they're advertising on the, in the NBA playoffs, dude. So they're- Oh they, my God. Yeah, they're they're definitely spending some bread right That's now. That's a, mm-hmm. that, it's gotta be one of the more expensive. Yeah, it's so cool to see our guy who is, uh, who they got from us from modeling our programs, actually modeling on television for Viore. I think that's so cool. Yeah. Wait, and wait, I, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, that's uh that's our model, dude. That's that's how they got introduced to him was oh, from- Oh, was that from our- Yeah, oh, from our from our, from our programs initially. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. I've seen and on Tonal, Tonal. He's yeah. on Tonal also. Both them, they they both plucked him from, from us first. I mean, he he was doing work for us. We should have signed him. Yeah. <laughs> we just start signing people. <laughs> Maybe if we could have afforded it back then. We would have thought of that. But, uh, I don't think we could have afforded to be just signing models like randomly back then. So that's pretty crazy. But it is cool to see. You know, it's really neat to see uh, him doing well. It's neat to see Viore on like massive platform like that doing commercials. I mean, they have to be crushing. I mean, they were yeah. in the billions already, right? Last year when we saw that valuation come out so it'd be interesting to see where they're at now you know they're got to be right they have to be rivaling lulu by now they no gotta, you don't think so no I yeah, don't it's think all so. mainstream marketing now but i do know that school. they're on the radar uh i know that they're now everybody's looking at them but i think lulu's oh so. they gotta be because you know right now that's one of the viewers things they, they pop up right across the street i noticed that <laughs> i noticed that every time so i'm pretty yeah. sure they're on the radar Either or and yeah. and they're busier have you guys gone yes yeah. yeah there's more yeah. people in their stores than- yeah i don't know you know maybe doug you can look up lulu like how they've been doing for the last year i wonder if they're uh, falling out of favor or they or were they still in growth mode i don't know i mean they were they've been popular for so long now have they peaked or are they still in growth yeah let me check i mean know. think about this okay lulu is one of the first athleisure wear brands that ever existed like that they is made like, leggings a thing well that was it so athleisure wear that was not a thing mm-hmm. no when we grew up athleisure wear was not a thing it is no, now if you wore a, sweats you were either a bum or yeah, sick yeah, or yeah. right uh unemployed or you're going to go work out right right yeah. the so best I, thing we had were those juicy sweats yeah oh yeah that was yeah, the yeah. only cool thing yeah that for girls chicks would wear yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean they, they literally created they created an entire market that did not exist and now there's a ton of brands that are in in that space how's it look doug Lulu's doing well. Uh, so in 2020, they had 3.9 billion in revenue. Yeah. In 2021, 4.4 billion. So they're in growth. 2022, 6.2 billion. Still growth. Mode. The whole market Still, is exploding. Yeah. Wow. Yep. The whole market. Yeah, but I mean, just a year, a year it was a year or two years ago when uh, Viore got their what two billion dollar valuation. So they're, they're yeah, up. but that doesn't mean I mean, that's I what know, their yeah. revenue. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's probably divide that by three to six, and that's probably is Lulu private or are they still. Um, are no, they, they're, they, they're publicly I think they're traded. Publicly traded yeah, yeah, they've been publicly traded for a, a hot minute. Interesting. I watched an interview of the CEO on Patrick Bet David's. It was a really good, actually, interview listening to his story. I think I brought it up on the podcast a long time ago. He's been putting out really good content. I don't know if you guys ever tune into his stuff, but um, I mean, he's been he's been calling the uh, correction and, and recession for well over a year. He called gas prices like a year and a half ago where they'd be. He said they reached ten dollars and we're. I'm getting real close to that right now. Over my house, it's seven thirty right now. Wow. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty soon, there was a meme that said, um, "Gas is so expensive. I'm just going to snort cocaine and run everywhere." And in my state, the price of gas is so high that it would be cheaper to buy cocaine and just <laughs> run everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be cheaper. Oh, Dude, that's funny. Like a senator said that at, at one point. Yeah, like this Republican. I've, I've seen a, a video of him actually literally saying that in court. or like What? Addressing. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm serious. I don't know what his name is, but uh, I've seen a, a guy actually say that verbally. You know what's interesting is that uh, when the car became a part of American life, it changed everything yeah. and cities got built around that. So if you look at old cities before cars were invented, like yeah, San Francisco, New York City, whatever, if you live in those cities, oh, you don't need to own a car. You walk everywhere. Then the car was invented and it gave people freedom and it, it created these sprawling suburbs where people live here, work way over here, where you need to have a car. Like if you live yeah. in San Jose, 
if you don't have a car, you're kind of screwed, right? You got to have some kind of transportation. I wonder if we're going to move back to the old yeah. way I wonder of if, cities. if like scooters and mopeds are going to be uh, on the rise here in terms of yeah. like people <laughs> downgrading, you know, their, their way to get to, well, the well, what is it? What does it look like in India and China? Like China has that, what's like that, that area in China. Okay. So that's probably most likely what we'll, we'll try and move to is there's an area that they compare to that China tried to build their own little Silicon Valley. I forget the name of it. But it's got it's basically like, you know, San Jose, Oakland, San Francisco, just like we have. And it's all they have like all the the speed rails connected to all of yeah. it. And so you can get from it's be like us being able to get to San Francisco in like eight minutes. Yeah. Hmm. It's like crazy. I, I, like so they I what's in, Doug, do you know what I'm talking about? I feel like you should know this. I don't know. No. Oh, really? You don't know this? So hmm. look up uh Andrew, maybe look up the Silicon Valley of China and or something like that. Google like that. Sal's a better Googler. But I would, I would think that would I'm, come I up. Feel, I feel like that's like, hey, doesn't that sound like a <laughs> Batman a villain? Whistler, a wizard. Doesn't that sound like a Batman yeah. villain? Like Google. Well, this is Google. so. Google. By the way, this, this, they, they heavily invested in this area for a while, and this is part of why they think we're going to get our asses kicked in the next decade or two by by China because of how they've they've aggregated all these br brilliant minds and companies, uh, tech companies and stuff. So all, the transportation is really easy. Yeah, everybody can get to, to each other really, really look, the old city, The old city designs with some changes is the way it should be. Look, people are healthier in these cities because they walk more yeah. and they just are. And so this that the model of the suburb with the whatever, it's I mean, a that's very- That's the only silver that, line we can talk about. Yeah, I, that's the way they need to design towns and cities. If you want, and it'll make a, a significant impact on people's health because like I said, I have family that lives in San Francisco Yeah, and- Half of them don't even have a car because it doesn't make any sense. And they walk everywhere. And I, I think that that's probably the way that we're going to have to go at some point. I don't know. They'd have to do massive change, though, to all the, the a lot of these cities, especially in the West. Here. You have to see what this looks like. Okay. Did you find it, Doug? I am looking for it. Yeah. Andrew, you? It's called Shenzhen. Is that what it is? And it's like multiple cities, right? All within a certain distance. And they're all linked together by like a high-speed train, I believe. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Shenzhen. And how can you give me the size of it? Like how many people and like I forget how I forget how big it is, but it's it's supposed to be like extremely impressive. Did you guys know that China's population is so high in comparison to the rest of the world that if you did the average human on Earth, it would be a thirty year old Chinese man? Did you guys know that? Oh really? I saw this the other day. Oh, wow. wait, say that again. Say what? So China has so many. It's, it's, the population's so big in right. comparison to the rest of the world that right. if you did like a like, you know, you do averages, right? Yeah. If you did the average human on earth, the average human on earth is a 30 year old Chinese man. Oh, I saw okay. this. You say, that's yeah. a funny stat. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so aliens visiting yeah, earth, you know? average guy. You know, yeah, the other thing third. that they have that we don't have is the, an app that is like kind of like a, a all in one. It's the WeChat. Oh yeah. That they have, which is basically like, Venmo. Meets. You know what else they have that we don't have? What? Camps where they re-educate people so that they can Dang. follow them. Ah. Boom! <laughs> we don't do that. Or, or at least we don't we know don't that we do, do that. anymore. It's not good. Hey, check this out. Look, a lot of individuals suffer from digestive issues, especially fitness enthusiasts because we eat a lot of protein, oftentimes a lot of fiber. Sometimes we get bloated or constipated, can't figure out what's going on. Well, digestive enzymes can definitely help, but you want to work with a company that specializes in digestive enzymes for athletes and fitness enthusiasts. And it's really easy to use. Take a couple of them with your meal and you get more or better, I should say, absorption of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, reduced uh, digestive issues. I use them with every single meal. I love them. And the company that I like to work with, uh, their product is called Masszymes, Masszymes, M A S S. Z-Y-M-E-S is the company. And right now you can get a free bottle or you can get a bottle of Mass Signs for free. All you got to do is pay a shipping fee. So literally try it out. Just go there, try it out, see what you see what you think. Go and buy, oh, there's no forced continuity. So you can literally just buy, get, you get one bottle and try it out. And then if you like it, go back for more. Go check it out. The free offer is at masszymes.com forward slash mind pump free. And again, you'll get uh, immediate access to your free digestive enzyme bottle of masszymes. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Josh from Colorado. Josh, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Uh, this Good. is awesome to be here. I've been a huge fan for like years. I mean, everyone says it. So you guys are, you guys are awesome. I'll, I'll cut to the chase. Um, so yeah, about like five or six weeks ago, my whole right arm 
starting like from my neck all the way down to my hand has literally been like so tight and so it feels like it's pumped literally all the time and kind of to the point where it has been annoying and can cause some pain at times um sometimes you can even notice like a literal difference in color between my two arms because that i did include the a picture of that so if you're able to pull that up you (laughs) you'll definitely see the 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 difference that i'm talking about but yeah so i've kind of been i thought it was my shoulder i i think it's my shoulder and like upper chest maybe but i've been using uh, maps prime and prime pro to kind of regularly treat that and i've been doing a lot of like wall circles are the big ones or is the big one that i'm working or that i have been using to kind of address this and then the other uh like the roll with the lift off is the other one that i've been using for it and um haven't really seen that help much um when i first started to do that it almost seemed like it started to get worse in a way uh like the tightness and the pain um but yeah when i do those wall circles i can literally feel like a huge shift and a pop in my shoulder when it's kind of at that uh, behind my head stage and I twist my wrist around and that doesn't happen on my left side at all. And then I can also notice that my right wrist has been giving me a little trouble sometimes too, with maybe a little mobility issues in there or so. And yeah, I've kind of been, I've been trying to address this as best I can. I've started to use my, my left hand for like my daily activities, which has been kind of tough because I am right hand dominant. So just trying to get away from that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was kind of curious if you guys had any ideas of what this could be or any advice. So Yeah. Have you seen a doctor, Josh? No, I haven't yet. Yeah. So. That's the first place you should go. Uh, when you notice, um, uh, you know, swelling on one side, you could have uh, either a blockage, some vasoconstriction going on for some reason or some nerve issues that are happening. So this is, uh, I, I don't think you can exercise your way no. necessarily out of this. Um, okay. yeah. So this is, this is a situation where I would, in fact, when we get off here, I would, I would have you go see somebody just to check it out to make sure that there's nothing major, um, like a, like a clot of some sort. Um, not, I don't necessarily think that's what it is, but, um, when you see a difference in one arm or one leg, the other, especially when there's swelling mm-hmm. that's involved, uh, there could be something that could be underlying that needs to get looked at by a doctor um, so this, I, there's, I, there's nothing I can give you, uh, exercise or movement wise that would fix this or help this unless you went and got cleared by a doctor and they said, Hey, it's not a blood clot. There's no nerve damage issues. There's no vasoconstriction stuff going on here. In which case then, um, we would look at like things like deep tissue massage, um, and exercise, but yeah, definitely I would go see somebody. In fact, when we hang up here, it's gotta be a circulation issue. No, yeah, it has to be right. Could be. I, yeah. I mean, we're, we actually got a chance to see the picture. So we're looking at it and it's, yeah, it was substantial. Yeah. yeah it's definitely, yeah, it's very, yeah, yeah, it's very obvious. You got something going on. Dude. So, um, <laughs> way above my pay grade. So a hundred percent, I would, I would send you in for sure too, because I don't know if I've ever seen anybody that has that much swelling on one side compared yeah. to the other without really doing anything. Yeah. There's something called thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, again, I'm not a doctor, but I, I trained uh, a bunch of doctors and I remember one time working out with one of my, uh, with one of my clients who was, uh, you know, he was, a, a this, this was his specialty, right? He worked on the circulatory system and he saw some of my, my shoulder veins kind of bulging out a little bit. And he said, Hey, you want to make sure that you, you know, you never have any, any, issues with swelling and stuff like that. Cause you could have something called thoracic outlet syndrome where, um, and I, I pulled it up here so I can read a little bit more about it, but it, it's a group of conditions that compress the nerves and blood vessels that pass between the collarbone and the first rib. And sometimes this happens when you build a lot of muscle or movement patterns kind of go off. Um, but nonetheless, this is something you got to go get checked out. Um, and I would do that okay. as soon as possible, just because we want to rule out anything major. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. That's kind of what I was afraid of. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't no. want to freak you. I don't want to freak you. It's a magical um, exercise yeah. to yeah, help you out. Bro. Yeah. So, but I would love, I would love to hear the what follow ends up, up happening. Yeah. yeah I would please. love to hear a follow up too. Are you in our forum, yeah. Josh? No, I'm not. All right. right. We'll let you in the forum just because I would love for you afterwards to uh, tag us in the forum on Facebook. Let us know what the doctor said because I'd love to see what the deal is. Don't freak out too much. I'm not trying to scare you, but this right. is definitely a situation. If you're my client, I wouldn't even train you. I'd send you right away to the to the to the doctor just to get checked out. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I will definitely do that. And I'm sure I will 
ask him too about like moving forward for with the with the exercise and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Do you guys, uh, I mean, I don't really have time today or within the next few days to go to the doctor. So would you guys just recommend take it off? Take take yeah yeah, yeah take it anything. take take it easy until you go see the doctor and then and once the okay. doctor tells you what you got going on, we could probably better advise you. Josh, yeah, then I, we'll know the limitations and all that to work with. But we need to know that before we would ever tell you anything. I, yeah, I'm I'm gonna press you and say you need to go see someone right when we hang up here. So when you okay. see when you see All swelling right. like that, if it is a clot, um, that needs to get handled right away because that could get real bad. Is it swollen right now? And wouldn't you send that picture? How how recent is that picture? That was taken last night. Are so. you are you okay. swollen right now? It it kind of changes throughout the day. I mean, at, in the morning is definitely the worst, and then like as I get it moving throughout the day, it definitely uh, feels a little better. But I mean, it's still painful. The the whole day. Yeah. yeah my, my guess is thoracic outlet syndrome based off what you're saying. However, uh, again, I, I would want to rule out something major like a, like a blood clot, uh, of some sort. So I would go get, I would go get checked out. So I don't know what you're going, what's going on today, but I would take yourself to the ER and say, Hey, I've got swelling on one side. It's painful. And they'll probably take a look at you right away. Okay. All right. So you're saying go right to the ER. Huh? Well, if you don't, if you can't make an appointment, uh, I wouldn't wait a day or two. I okay. would go right away. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, All right, Josh. Yeah, loop back. Right, let, let us know, guys. man. Let us know yeah, what happened. Yeah. All right, Josh. I will. Thank you. Thanks, appreciate brother. It. Care of yourself. I hate, I hate freaking people out I like know, that. But when you when you have uh, unidentified swelling on one side, it's, and it's very obvious. It's not like you know. When I looked at the picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not like. Kind of. It's, no. You could see it all the way from his shoulder all the way down to his wrist. Yeah. And if it is a clot, uh, that can turn into something really bad. And I don't, I mean, again, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think that's what it is. But you want to rule that shit out. And I wouldn't wait a day or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If you start to see yeah, something you like need that. answers for something like that. Yeah. You'd want to go, go get checked out. And there's definitely, like, look, here's the deal. Uh, there's a lot of things that correctional exercise can help and work on mm-hmm. and, and improve. But when you have a sudden, change uh in you know fluid retention or color or numbness yeah. or tingling or pain even yeah like, yeah like and it's just like unexplained what's going on why does one side look different than the other you got go get looked at because what western medicine is really good at is ruling out emergency situations you know best case scenario they're like oh there's nothing really wrong here or there might be some impingement or whatever yeah fine but worst case scenario it's like you're happy you went you know yeah and this is one of those things you brought up the uh wall circle and i was trying my best to like uh cue that to like if you feel any of these restrictions if you feel any of this pain if like back off yeah like like don't just like muscle your way through it like it's it's like a rep you're trying to to max your way through like this is something that you got to pay attention to all these this feedback that your body's giving you That's yeah well it, it is defense too i mean you the audience can't see but he's like a young, fit guy, so you yeah. don't, you're, you're not thinking like there's something. I'm just putting out that f- there for physically everybody. wrong yeah. with yourself, right? So you just right. assume that it's probably not that big of a deal, which is why he probably hasn't even set an appointment to go take a look that's at the, it. So. That's the the bane of being young. <laughs> yeah, it's no, never no, an issue. No, I had a client. it hits home, dude. It's I've done that. I had like a whole my arm was swollen, I, and then I was like just trying to work through it, and like had to go to the doctor. What was know? the problem? It was um, it was a reaction that I had to from a heavy masturbation. On the side. <laughs> 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 you went too fast. Doctor said, "Lay off on that side. Yeah. A little too much, guys. Too much cream, yeah, guy. A little too switch, much. Yeah, let's switch up your cream. Here switch you go, up, sir. <laughs> switch hands. <laughs> I had a client once come in, and uh, she goes, and you know what? Part of this is, you know, I appreciate that my clients trust me so much, but you got to be as your coach or trainer. Don't let your ego, you know, make you feel like you have to have the answers. She came in and she goes, hey, my right leg suddenly feels like really weak. What exercises can we do? I'm like, there's no exercises. Go to the doctor right now. <laughs> yeah. Get checked out. And it happened to be a little nerve damage. Oh, yeah, wow. So. wow, wow. Yeah. Our next caller is Andrew from Indiana. Andrew, what's happening, man? You know, I knew I recognized you. We, we, we had you at the, the VIP event a while ago, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Had a great time. Yeah, excellent. By the way, great uh, mind pump gear in the back. Is that your home gym? Yeah, that's a home gym. Yeah, we got the mind pump gear and the long sleep tea. Good deal, man. <laughs> awesome. All right, so yeah. what's your question? How can we help you? Hey, I want to see if you guys can give me some recommendations or some advice. My uh, my core, when I'm, when I'm doing core exercises, is my abs are cramping really bad. And to give you a little bit of background, right now I'm running anabolic. Uh, I'm in phase two. Uh, right before this, I ran power lift. And by the way, that program was great. I added 30 pounds to my uh, deadlift, to my squat, and then another 20 to my bench. So really successful. Um, I'm over on anabolic now, uh, running it uh, 
for I've run it multiple times. And when I get to the core exercises, my abs cramp up really bad. And I just don't know why I've got a uh, good water intake, a gallon a day. I'm using some LMNT, good sleep. So I wanted to see what kind of advice or recommendations you guys had. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's a relatively common thing. Calves and core is what I, I hear people say when it comes to muscle cramps, mm-hmm. how much sodium are you having a day? You said you're using LMNT. What are you doing? Like one packet? Yeah, just one packet. And I usually do it uh, when I wake up. Okay, Maybe go and then, to two. Yeah, and, and also, what about the rest of your diet? Is it is it a, a whole foods based diet, or do you ever have have you know processed foods? Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty clean. Uh, I do add a lot of salt uh, to my uh, to meals. Okay, you, you're probably going to need more sodium, believe it or not. So I would add okay. another packet. And then here's okay. the thing, you know, uh, taurine. Taurine actually helps a lot of people with a lot of muscle. So people tend to build a lot of muscle, have good strength. Taurine can help some people with muscle cramps uh, as well. So you might want to try supplementing with taurine maybe before your workouts and see if that if that helps as well. So I would up sodium uh, so you could throw another packet or two. I mean, to, to give you some context, I probably have three packets of LMNT a day. Oh, and, okay. And, and my diet is very low and, and heavily processed foods. And I salt everything as well. But about three packets a day and I feel best. When I drop below that, I start to notice some effects of maybe too low a sodium. So, and my carbohydrates tend to not be too high as well. Cause so I know that that reduces, you know, my, my kind of my water retention as well, or how much water my body will absorb. So I would, I would up your element. You, you're a pretty big guy. If I recall, you're like, you're, you're six foot or so. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your body weight? Uh, about 210 right now. Yeah. I mean, you're lifting weights. You got a lot of muscle. You don't need a lot of heavily processed foods. I would, I would definitely go two or three element T packets a day and um, and a little taurine and see if that doesn't if that doesn't help you out. The other thing I notice with and I, I only, this happens to my abs too. Um, and part of that for me is I'm really inconsistent with training my abs. And then when I go back to training them, I, I tend to hop right into like a, a I, what you I blast them quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I think I overdo it a little bit, and then I always find yeah. myself cramping up uh, afterwards. So it blows my mind how little yeah. my my body needs when I go reintroduce my ab training again because I'm re- now that's me. I'm really inconsistent with my abs it's one of those areas where I, I know i need to do more of and then i always get on a kick i start to do it again and then i always kind of overdo it and then i find myself cramping up when i do that so really easing myself into my ab training i i have to do that and i have a hard time doing that so are you consistent with your ab work or is this like an on off thing yeah no i'm consistent with it i mean i follow anabolic to a t uh so there's not a I don't, there's not a lot of core work in it and maybe it was coming off power lift because you know in power lift there's there's not, uh, there's no core work. So I really wasn't doing any during power lift. Obviously I was getting a lot when I'm doing those big, uh, compound movements, but now that I'm back on anabolic, I didn't know if that was something that, uh, maybe cause I'm doing more direct core work. I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe. And then the other thing to a transition that you're going through. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, emphasize the stretch when you're doing an exercise, like a physio ball curl. Um, mm-hmm. that can help. And then end the set with a stretch that can help with the cramp as well. I've had ab cramps and they're just, <laughs> Oh, they're the worst. Oh, oh God. Yeah, they they're gnarly. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I usually yeah, do right. dead hangs to kind of get rid of it. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Cause stretching the muscle will do it as well. But yeah, I would up the sodium and try some taurine and see if that doesn't help. And you'll notice uh, pretty much right away. Like you'll do it in a day or two. And then within that day or two, you should notice an improvement, um, in those things. Okay. And I was using, I'm using pulse from Mike. So, um, like, do I, should I add more taurine on top of that? Then you think? Um, yeah, or I would go taurine, but you know, you could go taurine after your workout, or uh, you know, on its own. You know, add okay. another. Yeah, like you don't need to add a ton. And I would mess around with it. Like I said, it's probably the. I, I would say the sodium is most likely. Okay. Make the biggest difference for sure. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything Perfect. we can, a- Andrew? Is there anything we can give you? You're, you've you've been with us for so long. I saw you at the VIP event. You've got our our yeah, shirt on. You got the flags. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're you're you know. You got the new program. You're crushing it. Man, yeah, I've got the new program. I think I have, I've got pretty much got every program and run almost everything that you guys have, but You're I would love to get in the forum just to connect with more folks and uh, just yeah. uh, get some stuff out there. You're yeah, in. Yeah, You're in. We'll put you in there, brother. Awesome. All right, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. No problem, all right, man. Boy, it, uh, it, of all, the, I don't know, I could sit here and list all the things that we were told were bad for us that actually turned out to be the opposite. Yeah. Sodium is one of them. The re- one. Sodium and cholesterol. Oh my God. The reason why sodium yeah. was connected to poor health outcomes in studies is because they never really controlled for the fact that people who tend to eat a lot of sodium also ate a lot of heavily processed foods. And so you kind of had that connection. Athletes in particular, people working out, people with a lot of muscle, more uh, you need a lot more well, sodium. People who eat clean. 
the difference between I'll never forget. I saw. I wish I had this. There was. I saw this infographic one time of like, uh, you know, eating whole foods hmm. and salting yourself compared to like eating out one meal. Like one meal of eating out is like like at a, like McDonald's or something, right? Or a fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. The amount of sodium that's in that one meal is oh, more than insane. like somebody who would eat in a week. I forget what it was, right? I'm probably exaggerating the the infographic, but it was it was dramatic. Oh. The difference of one eating out meal versus somebody. So if you eat, if you cook and make your own food, you probably need to add a, way more salt than you think to your diet. Yeah, well, I mean one small fast food meal is going to easily, easily have 1,200 to 2,000 milligrams or more of sodium in that meal, right? Heavily processed meals tend to be very high in sodium. How many, How much sodium, how much salt would you have to eat to hit 2,000 milligrams? Maybe Doug could look that up for me. But it's a decent amount and it's more than you would tend, you would sprinkle yeah, on, your, on your whole natural yeah. food, right? Yeah. So if you don't eat heavily processed foods and you sweat and you work out, you often have to supplement with sodium. That's the thing. You have to actually add, and especially if you work out in hot temperatures, and then if you add to that, you eat low carbohydrates, which a lot of people do when they want to look lean or whatever, which makes you lose more water. Uh, you got to add sodium. And like I said, I feel way better when my sodium is, uh, is when I you know do like three packets a day. That's like 3,000 milligrams of sodium mm -hmm. just in the LMNT that I'll yeah. drink. Our next caller is Candy from North Carolina. Candy, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on today. I hope you guys are doing well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'll keep this quick, um, but I want to thank you guys for having me on the show. I've been listening to you guys for probably a year and a half, two years, and I've been a trainer for over 15 years, and you guys have made me such a better trainer in the last couple of years, so I really appreciate everything that you guys do, so thank you. Hell yeah. Thank awesome. you. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about stretching and mobility. So, um, like I said, I've been a trainer for a while and we're always taught, you know, like dynamic warm up and stretching is always good kind of pre-workout static stretching is more preferable post-workout. It helps increase blood flow, helps increase, helps decrease, um, joint, joint pain and all that kind of stuff. You guys all know all the benefits, but I have been hearing a little bit of conflicting information lately regarding post-workout stretching. And I've come across a couple of articles that have said now that, um, uh, static stretching post-workout can actually decrease blood flow and deprive the muscle, muscle of oxygen and could possibly hinder performance in some way. So I wanted to get your opinion on this because I, I've been hearing it a little bit more throughout the fitness community and it's kind of conflicting information. So I wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Well, it could hinder performance mm. temporarily. So I can get I can get behind that. Yeah, you don't want a static stretch and then go do something. Right. So or, so yeah. Right. Yeah. Temporarily, the static stretch. It let, let let's say you were getting ready to go do something else, explosive or athletically. So yes, it you would need decrease, that muscle tension for it, that. Yeah, it would decrease performance there. But as far as uh, recovery, um, yeah, I'm gonna. So okay, so let's talk about the blood flow oxygen aspect of it. Okay. So are you familiar with blood flow restrictive restrictive training? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay, so this has been a, a, a therapy uh, technique, and it, we've been now studies are showing that it builds muscle and it simulates lifting heavier weights. So essentially, if I was going to work out my arm, what I would do is I would use like a knee wrap and I would uh, kind of tie off the top of my arm and restrict blood flow. And when I do exercises with that arm, it would fatigue very quickly with very light weight and it simulates uh, lifting heavier weight mainly because it restricts blood flow and oxygen. And so what it does is it, it, it makes the lightweight almost like it's heavyweight and it, it activates those fast twitch muscle fibers. Okay. Re more oxygen, less oxygen depends on what we're looking for. If I, when you do a deep static stretch of a pump muscle, it definitely burns. It definitely hurts. If you've ever done this on your quads after getting your quads really pumped from squats, you know, holding a 60 second stretch can feel like hell. I think mm -hmm. it's similar to blood uh, flow restrictive type training. So in a stretch, because the muscle is being stretched, you are squeezing blood out of the muscle and somewhat deprived, probably feeling the burn because you're, re you're, re you're restricting the, the removal of waste, similar to like what I said with blood flow restrictive training. Is that going to contribute to muscle growth? I believe so. In fact, bodybuilders and strength athletes have been doing techniques like this for decades and anecdotally, they've noticed great results. I notice great results from doing this. And there's animal studies 
that show something quite uh, similar. Now, here's the real uh, benefit, I think. I like static stretching to improve, increase range of motion and also to induce a parasympathetic state. Yes. So after your workout, you don't want to be hyped. You want to kind of be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Static stretching tends to induce that. And I think the benefits mainly would come from something like that. So I like doing static stretching post-workout. I like doing it with clients, especially on muscles that tend to be tight. I have never really noticed a dramatic uh, difference one way or the other, it's except for the fact that it makes the person kind of feel better after the stretch is over. So, and I, I don't like to to discredit that um, you know that the, the way people feel uh, that you know maybe that subjective feeling of doing the stretching after a workout. We like to tend to do that in the fitness space. Well, oh, well, this study show blah blah blah. Look, I don't care. The client likes the way it feels. They feel more relaxed afterwards. And that's that, you know, that. The, the well, talk about the benefits, too, of, of getting into that state before you go. What does everybody do after they work out? They go eat. Yeah, that's the so, same thing, parasympathetic. Yeah, so important to get them in that state before before they go eat, too. So that's, there's benefits yeah, it there. it sparks the recovery process. That's right. And, and then as far as, like, you know, reducing delayed onset muscle soreness or making soreness go away, Soreness is interesting. Um, it will often tell us you did too much, but it doesn't necessarily tell us if it goes away that you're not overtraining. There's lots of people who overtrain and don't really get sore. They just work out a lot all the time. I've done it myself. I've done double split routines where I'm doing tons of volume and not really getting sore, but I clearly was overtraining. So the soreness, soreness itself can tell us some stuff, but it doesn't tell us everything. So when we look at studies and we say, oh, massage therapy doesn't reduce soreness, therefore it doesn't accelerate recovery. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, Especially for, you know, we're discrediting that subjective feeling that the person gets from stuff like this. There's a lot of benefits to it for different reasons. And I, just to give you an example of one, if I'm doing heavy squats, for instance, and then I know that I have a long commute in my car uh, afterwards and to be able to get in that parasympathetic state, but also to unlock uh, my body from that tense state of like my, all of my, my muscles still in that firing tense, shortened position. I want to unlock that. So that way I'm not feeling that, uh, reiterating, uh, as I'm sitting in that locked position, which then when I get home, I feel like pain as a result of that. So for me to have that freedom of movement, uh, is beneficial on top of that. And, and the static stretching actually provides that for me after the workout. Yeah. Candy, Can I'd like to see these studies too. Yeah. Are you in our forum, Candy? No, I'm not. We're going to put you in our forum then. So this is the type of great stuff to, to drop in our forum. Like, hey, I came across a study or, you know, here's somebody saying this on Instagram and you post and share in our, our private forum. And then there's lots of trainers in there and lots of great discussion around stuff like this. Yeah, studies are really interesting too. We got to be careful with, because um, sometimes the headlines will take, oh, this the headline says yeah, this. Sensationalize it. Yeah, so. Um, I, guess I, I guess I should say it's more like I've been coming across articles that have been talking about it. Not I haven't been able to find like a scientific study that has proven one way or the other, but it's more, you know, these PhDs coming out with, you know, athletes stretching versus regular people stretching, so forth and so forth. So that's okay. Um, Share the article, even, even, yeah. even an article. It's, it's we'll, thought we'll, provoking we'll, anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, it's a good and, conversation. Yeah. And I'd like to, you know, again, I'd like to, in, in sometimes in order to get traction, one of the most effective ways to do it is to counter what everybody believes to be common knowledge. Yeah. So if everybody thinks, you know, stretching after your workout is good for you and someone says, Hey, it may not be. They tend to get more traction. And then there's lots of speculation involved. And I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'd like to read the articles myself. And I'm always open to having my mind change. But anecdotally, my experience with uh, my, my clients over the last you know, man, two and decades, they're, and they're almost, it's a good thing. And there almost always seems to be an exception to the rule, mm -hmm. right? Maybe yeah. there is a specific person where it's like, oh, yeah, no, that type of person I would not do that with. Right. So, I mean, that, that also comes into play, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd love to see the articles. Yeah, please post them in the forum. Okay, I will. Thank awesome. you, Candy. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you. you. Going. All right. Yeah, just to give an example, um, mTOR, uh, mammalian target rapamycin. This is a, a signaler of muscle growth. We know this. Also, will drive cancer growth. Okay? So, depending on the context, it's great or it's bad. If you have cancer, we don't want to spike mTOR. If you don't have cancer, we love having high mTOR. It makes you healthier, makes you stronger, improves insulin sensitivity. So you'll see studies of, uh, or articles of people speculating and saying things like high protein diet may not be good for cancer because high protein you know, raises uh, mTOR. Well, cancer fuels off of protein and carbohydrates and sometimes fats. In a pro-cancer environment or an environment where we have cancer, the rules change. 
So we have to be very careful when we read some of these articles and how they try to ex you know extrapolate and then speculate on kind of what's going on. So I'm very interested to see what these you know what these articles say. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I think it's so common in our space, and I think great point you made. It, I think. Uh, there's not a lot of new, great, cutting edge stuff that's coming yeah. out. So this is what we tend to do. Yeah. We tend to take something. We meddle with like you know some of the, uh, the the staples that people do in their rituals. Yeah, no, and it's to get attention and traction because then people are like, "What?" Yeah. And then I mean, if it sparks a good conversation, I'm all for it. I mean, and, and if you're and there are a lot of exceptions to the rule with a lot of different studies where you're like, "Yeah, in this Dude, case, I, that that it does apply." I love I love using deep tissue massage or massage as an example. Do you know how many studies there are? That that are out there that say massage does not help with recovery. And you know what? Nobody believes it because most people have gotten massages yeah, feel amazing. and most people have felt the difference. And maybe it's a psychological, emotional phenomenon when you're getting touched and massaged and you relax and maybe that's what helps it. Maybe it's subjective. Really doesn't yeah. matter because they have the studies that show it and everybody's like, no, I've experienced it. There's, yeah. there's something more, more to this. And I guarantee later on there will be studies that will, that will prove kind of what people's uh, what most people's experiences are. So we have to kind of be careful with this kind of stuff. It takes a lot with these studies to talk me out of things that work. And I've seen work with my clients. Yeah. Our next caller is Neil from North Carolina. What's up, Neil? How can we help you? How's it going guys? Uh, appreciate you guys taking the call. Um, so long story short, um, I'm a career firefighter here in North Carolina. Um, looking for ways and some advice to, train to continue to get stronger and bigger, which is a goal of mine, but to also find the ways to recover, um, to avoid injuries. Uh, a lot of guys that I work with either get to retirement and, you know, everything hurts because they've done 30 years of doing hard work or there's guys that pop biceps all the time or they're tearing Achilles and stuff like that. Um, so just trying to find ways to continue lifting hard, continue lifting heavy, uh, but to do it you know, correctly and safely and recover well and to be able to stay away from those injuries. Yeah. Good question. I have, I have a friend that I just uh, made recently as a firefighter. What's your schedule look like? What, are you what, like two on, two off, four on? So we do, what we do is we call it a modified LA. Um, it comes down to 10, 24 hour shifts a month. Um, you only work the 24 hours at a time and then you're off anywhere from one day at a time to two days in a row or four days in a row. Okay. This is, by the way, this is one of the main reasons why um, a lot of your your coworkers feel so beat up afterwards. It's that schedule of 24 hours where, and that really, really has uh, a detrimental effect over time on recovery and health and all that stuff. Plus your job is can be very physical, of course, and then you want to work out on top of that. So you're going to have to have a completely different approach than most people. I know your goal is to build muscle. So you think that you should be focused mostly on building muscle, but the reality is you should be focused mostly on recovery. And through that process, you'll build more muscle. So when you look at your workouts, you should have, you know, you'll have one or two workouts where you go to build muscle, but then the majority of the time that you're training your body, because you're, I mean, you're working all year long. It's not like you have an in-season and off-season like an athlete. In yeah. fact, if you look at athletes, if you look at athletes in season, a majority of their training is focused on recovery. All of it is. Yeah. It's it's not focused on improving or maximizing performance. So if you if you if you were if it looked like this, let's say it was like 70% recovery based, 30%, you know, getting your body to progress based, something like that, mm -hmm. you would actually progress faster as a result versus the flip, which is most people do. Most most people would go 70%, I'm mm -hmm. building, and then I'll do the 30% recovery type of stuff. Flip that on its head, and what you'll find is your body will actually respond really well. You know, we did a, actually, did you know we did an episode dedicated to you guys? Uh, maybe. I've we followed did, you guys for a while. It might have been an episode that I missed, but yeah, we I did, did not. We did an episode. How long ago was that, Doug? Maybe six months to eight months ago? Maybe a year ago. Maybe a year. Yeah. Oh, has it been a year? Yeah, it was uh, It was, It was. was called First Responders. You know, so oh, we, please. I, I'm going to look it up here. Yeah, I'll have Doug look it up right now. But we go awesome. really deep into what Sal's talking about right now when we broke down like scheduling and how we would kind of break up. What is it, Doug? 1487. Episode 1487. Okay, 1487. Cool. Yeah, I'll give it a listen. Yeah, make sure you listen to that because we go a little bit deeper uh, into that and gave more examples of like what training would look like. But I mean, I think Sal hit it perfect. Like, I don't know how how hard you're training right now, but really w one to two days a week is all I'd be really focused on like a MAPS anabolic or even a MAPS performance type of a program for your foundational okay. days. And then the rest of your training really is more recovery based mobility, stretching, meditation, like just that type of work 
to try and complement uh, your heavy load that you have as far as your scheduling. Okay, cool. Because so like for me right now, so, you know, I've grown up in the gym, pl- played sports my whole life. So I was a division one athlete for a couple of years. Um, so I've always been in the weight room. It's always been my getaway, stuff like that. So for me right now, probably the last two years or so, I've done the five, three, one, uh, lifting schedule. So I'll always go in, I'll do my heavy compound lift. And then everything else is usually auxiliary. Um, just kind of whatever I'm feeling for the day. Um, and then I always make sure to have at least one day where I don't touch a weight, you know, I'm eating well that day. I'm resting, I'm napping if I need it. Um, stuff like that. Um, so it makes total sense to have kind of more recovery, especially so like yesterday I was on shift. We had a call at two in the morning. I wasn't back in bed till like 4 a.m. Something yeah. like that. So I'm, you know, missing those two I, hours I would, of sleep. I'd rather see like a, uh, like a full body routine on one day. And the day that I would do it with you would be based on your schedule, right? So I'd want... I'd want to wait until you had a nice, you know, full day of rest and recovery from maybe one of your shifts. And then that the first day you're feeling really fresh and good. We go in there and we do like a a really good, intense, full body routine. And then, and then say you have another day after that, then maybe we do some light auxiliary stuff and maybe mobility stuff. And then you're getting ready to get ready for another shift or whatever. And we're either going to take the day off or we're going to stick to like mobility. I'm going to, I'm going to guess. Uh, I'm going to make a guess here, Neil, that uh, just based off your background, you probably, the reason why you're calling and asking this question is you're probably already starting to feel some of the stuff you're talking about where you're kind of plateauing, a feeling a little burnt out. A little bit, okay. So one of the challenges with especially um, high-level athletes or, yeah. or ex-high-level athletes is that they don't train optimally. They train, they push the, they can to, the, to what they can handle. There's a difference there. There's optimal, which will get your body to progress. And then there's how much you can handle. And athletes tend to go to the what they can handle route. And then if you do that long enough, it starts to really wear down on your body. So like to give you an example of what I mean by recovery, you, if you like mm-hmm. the gym and it's a great place for you to go and relax, literally you could go in there and do exercises for body parts at really low intensity and just okay. stretch and squeeze and get a little bit of a pump. Like I'm talking like 40%, 50% intensity. That's a recovery mm-hmm. workout, mm-hmm. okay? So you can go in there and do stuff but you're just kind of moving and practicing and getting a pump. And then Rubber once a bands week- bands are good for this too. Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's like low damage, stuff that has low damage, low intensity, low to moderate intensity, uh, okay. body weight, you know, just it, as long as you're moving and getting blood circulation and get, and working on the active recovery, mm-hmm. that's going to be the best bet. And then what's going to blow you away is you're going to get stronger. You'll, that one day that you go and you can actually do a full body workout where you push it a little bit, you'll notice, oh man, I'm I'm actually well, getting stronger. Neil, do you, do you have MAPS performance? I do not. Um, okay. I've looked into it in the past, but I've never actually gotten it. All right. Well, I'm going to have Doug send you MAPS performance. I would love to see you follow one day a week with the foundational program. And okay. then uh, your other days of the week, you can either do what Sal's saying, where you kind of go in and do like just a low kind of pumping workout, auxiliary <laughs> arm, arm, shoulders, you know, maybe machine work or bands like Justin's saying. On your other days, so in MAPS performance, you have three foundational days, mm-hmm. and then we have what are called mobility days. Um, I would choose just one of those foundational workouts a week, and then uh, I would definitely do at least one or two of the mobility days on other days. And then if you wanted to add some of the kind of pumping exercises that Sal's talking about, I would do that on your on the mobile because mobility will probably take you, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes probably to do the mobility yeah, yeah, exercises. You could go the rest of the time, yeah. do some of the light, light work that Sal's saying. And, and I bet you'll see some great results. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Because my other goal too right now with, you know, gaining that size and strength is I've always been a hard gainer, which, you know, part of me is upset with it. Part of me is not because, you know, it's genetics. Um, but I would love to get, you know, like another 10 pounds or so on because right now I'm about... 6162, 195. I would love to sit at like 200, 205. Um, so being able to put that on as well, um, which I think, you know, the recovery and everything will help with that. I, I don't be surprised. I do not be, I know where you're going right now. Yeah. I do not be surprised because you, you, fall right, <laughs> you fall right in the category of Sal and I right here, right? So do not be surprised on the less, less intensity, less work. Less is more, man. It ends up Seems breaking you through your plateau. I mean, this is definitely the the, what okay. the the trap for a lot of athletes is, to Sal's earlier point, you do what you can handle, not what is optimal. And what blows guys' minds like yours and mine when it happened to me was all of a sudden I dramatically reduced how much training I was doing and my body started to grow. Mm-hmm. So this might be you, dude. By, and it might be really difficult. So the, the mental game is going to be tough, bro, for – 
you if you know you can you know you can do more but we're telling you like just yeah. just do that <laughs> and trust the process yeah. and, and and then get back to us and then we'll go from there yeah absolutely so basically check the ego at the door is what you're yes, telling yes always yeah. yes always yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool so so basically right now you know follow what you guys are going to send me and then kind of stay away from those heavier compound lifts like I've been doing for the last year or two. Yeah, well, well you, you, just, got, you got that in. Okay, Mass Performance has yeah. heavy compound lifts. That's on your foundation day. Those okay, are, cool. That's, that's on your foundation cool. day. You're so. just doing one of those a week. Yeah. The rest of the time you're doing. Oh, okay, okay. The, the rest of the time you're doing mobility, the mobility sessions that are in performance, and or very light pumping exercises just to kind of get a little bit of pump in, in the body if gotcha. you want. But that's yeah. it. Awesome. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. I feel you guys. All right, awesome. man. All right, Neil. Thanks, cool. Neil. Awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for everything you guys do. You All got right, it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times did you have to learn this lesson, Adam? Oh well, as is... soon as he said what he said, what he yeah. said that right there, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, our gator, huh? Yeah, I thought the same thing too. I was yeah. just doing too much, man. Dude, I, I did yep. this when I was uh, when I started competing in jujitsu. I was like, I did jujitsu three or four days a week, and then I did three days a week of strength training. I said, oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. You know, six days a week, I have a day off or whatever, and I was just not feeling good, not feeling good, and. At one point, I said, you know, I'm going to treat myself like a client because I'm always better with my clients than I went myself. I literally went down to one day a week of strength training, and it was four or five compound lifts. That's it. No isolation move, nothing. My strength went through the roof, and my performance improved dramatically from cutting all that back. And I mean, with firefighters, their schedules are crap. Like, they go 24 hours. You ain't sleeping, yeah. you know, two or three days a week. Like, you're very hampered with your recovery. It's very challenging. So you just keep throwing more stress on top of your body. And I know that's, you know, athletes do it. Justin, I guarantee you can you can <laughs> attest to this. Athletes yeah. don't do what's optimal. They go as much as they can get away with. No, because it's all about the mental, like, discipline, the fortitude, the, I can get through this because, like, whatever challenge you, you place in front of me, I'm going to overcome it. Well, you've been trained that way. Yeah, and if he's a, if if he's, like if he that. was a D1 athlete, that means he's got eight probably plus years minimum of, of that condition. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, conditioning his mind and training that way. Yep. It's hard not to apply that. It took me a couple of years to uh, you know, get rid of that kind of I mean, I still think that I mean, you hear me on the show always I, I've been talking a lot about like, oh man, one of the things I notice is as I've gotten older, how much easier it is, like how little work yeah. I have to do. I think part of that is the time under iron that I talk about. I think the other part of that is I'm closer to doing what I was supposed to be doing for my yeah. body versus what I've been trying to do. The wisdom for is kicking in finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's crazy how, 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 uh, how, how much less you have to do. And, and of course it's who I'm speaking to. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. if I'm yeah. talking to an athlete, this is what the conversation sounds like. If I'm talking to somebody who has a really hard time getting off the couch, they never train, they never exercise different conversation, but for a D one athlete, you know, go get her firefighter. Type of, yeah, yeah, man. Like, uh, this is probably, you're probably he just, just really, always wants to get after. Yeah, overdoing yeah. it. And it's going to be hard for him. It's going to be hard for him to only do one foundational day a week and then go to the gym and be like, oh, I feel good. I could yeah, do, exactly. I could do more. So we'll see how he does. 